I recently corresponded with a European semi truck driver who made it very clear that in its current form, the Tesla semi is unsuitable for the European market. So let's dive into some of the things that this driver pointed out to me and also talk about some of the changes that will likely need to be made to the Tesla semi before it hits the European market. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. In case you haven't noticed, semi trucks in Europe look quite a bit different than in the USA. Due to stricter size restrictions, European trucks have flat front ends and cab over engine designs, which make the trucks themselves shorter and allow companies to maximize the length of the trailers and thus the cargo capacity of those trailers. In short, the huge long nosed semi trucks that you see on the road commonly in America, those are not suitable for the European market, including the Tesla semi. Now to be clear, this video is not a dig on the Tesla Semi, which is an incredible feat of engineering and completely destroys the electric semi truck competition when it comes to range, efficiency, and charging speed. And the point of this video is to show that in its current form, um, some changes will need to be made to the Tesla Semi before it's ready for the European market, which is a very important market as we'll talk about. As you know, Tesla recently delivered their first semi trucks to PepsiCo at an event on December 1st. And that's just the beginning because Tesla plans to, as Elon Musk mentioned in the Q3 2022 conference call, they plan to produce somewhere around 50,000 semis per year in North America by sometime around 2024. And that's just the North American market because he also mentioned here that they plan to expand beyond North America. In the future, it would of course make a lot of sense for Tesla to build semi trucks in China for that market. And of course, semi trucks in Germany or somewhere in Europe for that market, that would make a lot of sense. And obviously those markets are very important when it comes to commercial trucks, specifically when you compare the European market to the North American market, as Daimler pointed out in their full year 2021 investors presentation, the North American market and the European market are somewhat close in size. In fact, from 2016 to 2021, based on Daimler's data, the European market was actually slightly larger than the North American market. However, when it comes to selling the Tesla Semi in Europe, it's not going to be a simple copy paste, uh, just simply producing the same exact Semi in Europe because the European market, as I alluded to earlier, is quite different and the demands of Semi trucks are quite different than in the North American market. Now, as I move into some of the changes that Tesla will likely need to make to the Semi before it hits the European market, I want to share the perspective of a commercial truck driver in Europe who shared their opinion with me. This European truck driver wrote to me saying, the Tesla Semi is completely unsuitable for use in Europe. Many of the sites that I visit are extremely short of space. The long nose of the Tesla Semi would mean that it would simply be impossible to operate in many of the yards where I work. This driver then went on to reference the legal limits with how long a cab and trailer can be in Europe. And of course, they're very strict there in Europe with how long their trucks can be for many reasons, which we'll talk about in a minute. But because of this, the European trucks themselves are actually very short and have flat front ends. And companies have optimized the size of their trailers to maximize cargo capacity. And if you brought in a longer truck like the Tesla Semi, many of those trailers which are optimized for the European truck design would probably not be legal to tow behind the Tesla Semi and they would go over the legal requirements um, for the European market. And thus companies who have invested a lot of money in all these trailers would be very unlikely to want to switch to a very long, large semi. And thus the Tesla semi is going to have to change a bit before it hits the European market. As this driver put it, talking about companies that have invested in uh, trailers, they won't want to throw away this investment just to buy the semi with a long bullet nose. All the semi trucks in Europe have a cab over layout because essentially that's the only way to meet the regulations. If you've never heard that term cab over, it simply refers to the fact that in Europe, the semi trucks have a cab built over the engine. It's called a cab over engine design as compared to the North American market where the engine sits at the front of the semi truck, thus the really long front nose. 
Now, when it comes to some of the specific legal limits for trucks in Europe, I found an article on the Energy Transportation Group website. And this author mentioned in Europe, semi trucks usually do not exceed 18.75 meters, which is somewhere around 61.5 feet in length. Since Europe still restricts overall truck length, having a shorter power unit means you can have a longer trailer, maximizing the volume of goods you can carry. In addition, this article from Motor Biscuit, once again referencing that limit in Europe, mentioned that meanwhile American trucks can tow multiple trailers at a time. Another benefit to the flat nose design of European trucks, specifically for the European market, and besides the optimization of the amount of cargo that you can carry, Going back to this Energy Transportation Group article, the author mentioned the square shape of the cab makes the truck easier to park because the driver can better estimate the distance in front of the engine. This is ideal if space is at a premium, which is often the case in historic European cities. So now that we've covered the why, I'd like to move over to some size comparisons of the Tesla Semi versus a traditional Semi in North America, and then compare that to the average Semi size in Europe. Now it is important to note that the Tesla Semi, as we'll talk about, it is quite a bit shorter than traditional Semi trucks sold in North America, which has huge advantages for maneuverability as compared to the regular trucks in North America. So for the North American market, this is actually a huge win. However, it appears like the Tesla Semi will still be much too big for the European market and will have to undergo a serious redesign to be viable in this important market. At Tesla's delivery event, they compared the size of the Tesla Semi to the average Semi here in North America. And as you can see, the Tesla Semi is quite a bit shorter than the average Semi in this market. Based on my estimations, we of course don't know the exact size of the Tesla Semi, but based on this graphic that Tesla put up, I estimate that if you measure from the front bumper of the Tesla Semi to the back of the cab, that measurement is going to be somewhere around 22% less than a comparable North American Semi truck. Based on my research, it appears like the average European truck has a cab length that is up to 50% less than the average truck cab length in North America. So as you can see, while the Tesla Semi is a huge improvement over the North American Semis that are here, when it comes to moving the Tesla Semi to the European market, Tesla is going to have to move to a flatter front end design. But one side negative effect of moving to this flatter design, and I believe Tesla engineers will work some magic and maybe it won't be as drastic as maybe I'm thinking, but I believe the Tesla Semi will lose a lot of the aerodynamic efficiency that it currently has with its bullet shape. And when you look at the current design of the Tesla Semi with its bullet shape, it has a coefficient of drag somewhere around 0.36, which is very low for a semi truck. I believe this is a key part of the highway efficiency of the Tesla Semi. And one of the key ways that Tesla is able to achieve uh, 1.7 kilowatt hours needed per mile traveled, which as compared to other electric semi trucks, as I've shown in the past is very impressive. Now, when it comes to how difficult it may be for Tesla to move to a flat uh, front design for the Tesla Semi, thankfully, when it comes to the Tesla Semi, as compared to a diesel Semi, which has a huge diesel engine at the front, moving that to the bottom of the truck, of course, takes a lot more of a redesign than with the Tesla Semi, because the Tesla Semi has three motors on the back axles and apparently the battery pack under the cabin itself. I don't know how difficult it's going to be for Tesla to change the design of the Tesla Semi, but nonetheless, it's obvious it's not just going to be a copy and paste from the North American Semi to the European market. I'm not an engineer and I can take a look at what we see here. It appears like to me there would be some frame changes needed for this design for a flatter design. But if you're an engineer and you're watching this video and you have any insights on how difficult it may be for Tesla to switch to a flatter design while using much of the same components underneath the underneath frame of the Tesla Semi, let me know. Okay, going back to my correspondence with a European truck driver, another benefit of a European truck having a very flat front end is it allows for better visibility, which is especially important for smaller roads and smaller tighter spaces in the European market. This driver specifically mentioned, European rules require excellent visibility of vulnerable road users who may be close to your cab in city locations. My cab has class five and class six mirrors that give me a view of the road looking vertically down the side of the passenger door, the front of the cab, and of course, I can look directly out of the driver window. The Tesla Semi appears to have exceedingly poor visibility in these areas, as bad as in a car. 
Now I do wanna point out that the Tesla Semi does have quite a few cameras built into it, and this may be mitigated quite a bit by being able to display those camera angles on the screen in the cabin, but nonetheless, this is an issue that the European truck driver did bring up. Now, when it comes to backing up the Tesla Semi, in a previous video, I shared Luke's opinions, a commercial truck driver named Luke, I shared his opinions on backing up the Tesla Semi, and he brought up the potential issue of the Semi truck seat being in the center of the vehicle, maybe potentially being a downside uh, for backing up. Um, I believe, as I mentioned in that video, drivers will adapt and get used to this, but as it sits right now, this will be a big change with how drivers back up. This European truck driver brought this up and said, and of course for reversing, the Tesla Semi is the only truck that is blind on both sides. When I look out the side window in my truck, I can take in the position of the steer wheel, the drive wheels, and the angle of the trailer, the lines on the ground where the trailer is pointed, and the dock that I'm aiming for. No camera comes close to giving you that much situational awareness. The big mirror on my passenger side is basically useless for backing because it is so far away. The mirrors in the semi are both the same huge distance from the driver. So in conclusion, I believe the Tesla semi is incredible and I believe it's going to sell really well here in the North American market. And I believe it has a lot of improvements over a regular diesel semi. Now it does have some limitations as we've talked about and the charging network is going to have to be built out quite a bit, but the Tesla Semi right now is an incredible semi truck that really shows what the future is going to look like. Nonetheless, when it comes to moving the Tesla Semi to the European market, there are going to have to be quite a few changes made for it to adapt to that market. Did I miss something? Let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also, if you're a commercial truck driver or you work in the commercial trucking space and you have something to share with me on this, and I think especially if you're in the European market, I'd love to hear from you, um, please email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. And thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to also thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.